Welcome to section three. In this section, we're going to talk about how to determine likelihoods using logistic regression. In this section, we're going to take a look at the theory behind logistic regression. After that, we're going to have a video on how to use binary logistic regression to predict birth weight. From there, we're going to move on to multinomial logistic regression to help us predict credit risk. And finally, we're going to have a video that allows us to test logistic regressions assumptions. In this video, we're going to focus on understanding logistic regressions theory. Now, in general, the purpose of logistic regression is that it is a basic technique that is used to create models to predict a categorical outcome. So whereas in the previous section, we talked about linear regression, which allowed us to predict a continuous outcome, you'll see that logistic regression is actually very similar but it's going to allow us to predict a categorical outcome instead of a continuous outcome. So for example, we might use logistic regression to help us predict which customers are going to buy a product based on a variety of background variables or previous purchases. Or we might be trying to predict student success, for example, whether they're going to pass or fail or graduate or drop out from an educational program. Now, with logistic regression, its purpose is going to be to separate the effects of the various predictors on the categorical outcome of interest. So we're going to end up focusing on what is important in affecting the outcome and also what is important in terms of predicting the values. Now, in terms of the basics of logistic regression, logistic regression is similar to linear regression. So some of you might be wondering, well, why don't we just use multiple linear regression to predict the values of a categorical outcome variable? Well, there's two main problems with that. The first is that multiple regression is going to fit a straight line through the data. And so if you have values of 0 and 1, for example, multiple linear regression is going to be predicting values outside of that range or even within that range that are not values of 0 or 1. So it's going to give you values that are technically impossible. So that's one of the problems. The second problem is that although it's possible to consider the predicted values not as the actual values themselves, but as probabilities, the probability values themselves are really not going to make that much sense. The other potential problem that you have is that when you have categorical data and you have categorical outcome variables, the assumption of homogeneity of variance, which is a key assumption of linear regression, is always going to be violated. So that's why logistic regression was developed as a solution to overcome these problems. Now, in terms of the goals of logistic regression, the first is that you want to determine the effect of the set of variables on the probability plus the effect of the individual variables. So, first of all, we want to make sure we have an overall statistically significant model. And then once we have that, we want to see which predictors are the important ones in the model. The second goal of logistic regression is that we want to attain the highest predictive accuracy possible given the set of predictors that we have. So not only do we want a statistically significant model, and not only do we want to determine which predictors are the important ones, but we also want a model that gives us a high degree of accuracy in predicting our categorical outcomes. Now, people may focus on one or either one or the other of these goals based on whatever their, uh, their purpose is with the project. For those people that are more interested in theory and the causal effects, they're typically going to focus more on the first goal. You know, we have this set of predictors, are they statistically significant? And if they are, which ones are the important ones? For those people that are more interested in predicting the categories of the dependent variable, they're going to be focused more on the second goal. So yes, we're assuming that, you know, we're happy that we have a statistically significant model, but really how good is that model? Is that model really useful in terms of helping us predict whatever our outcome variable is? This graph here depicts the general idea behind logistic regression. So let's think about this for a moment. We're using logistic regression when we have a categorical outcome variable. Let's say that our categorical outcome variable is whether someone has a heart attack or if they don't have a heart attack. So that's our outcome. You could have one of those two options. You either had a heart attack or you didn't have a heart attack. Let's say, for example, the people that had a heart attack have a value of one. Let's say that the people that had no heart attack had a value of zero. Okay. Now, if we were to fit a straight line through that, you can see that there's only two points that we really care about. All the other points on that straight line, if we were using linear regression, are really irrelevant and they're not really possible. So what we really need is 
we need a function that is not going to be a straight line, but it's going to capture those values for those people that have no heart attack and for those people that do have a heart attack. So this categorical outcome. Now let's say that we're trying to predict whether someone has a heart attack or doesn't have a heart attack based on cholesterol level. Now we might assume, for example, that those people that have low levels of cholesterol would not have a heart attack. So you would see a lot of values down here. Likewise, we might assume that those people that have high levels of cholesterol might have a heart attack. So we might have a lot of values up here. So what this S-shaped function does, which is really your logistic curve, your S-shaped curve, that's what ends up capturing that kind of data very nicely. So you can see that when we're predicting values that have a that are categorical values that you know, let's just say their values of zero and one. They could be values of one or two as well. They're just categorical values. It makes sense to have an S-shaped curve that's going to end up fitting that data. And that's your logistic regression. And because of that, you're not going to end up having impossible predictions because a logistic function only has values that go from zero to one. And you can see what the formula is here. Now, you can see a couple of things here. Notice that on the right-hand side of this equation, this is your logistic function, on the right-hand side, it looks exactly the same as what we had for linear regression. We have an A, which is really your y-intercept. You have a B, which is your slope for each predictor. And you have your X, which are the values on the independent variable. So that looks exactly the same as your linear regression equation. But notice that on the left-hand side of the equation, we're not predicting y anymore. Instead, what we're doing is we're predicting the odds of predicting one category versus the other. And not only the odds, but we're actually taking the natural log of the odds. And that's your logit function, which is what logistic regression is actually working with. So again, the idea here is that logistic regression does not directly predict the values of the dependent variable, but again, it's going to end up predicting the odds of the event of interest occurring. So let's focus on that for a little bit. What do we mean by odds? So let's talk about odds. Now, what do odds look like? Well, here's your just general equation for calculating odds. That would be the probability of one group minus the actual probability that you just calculated. So really, if you Think of that. What we're really talking about here is that we're looking at the probability of being in group one relative to the probability of being in group two. Now, if you have an odds ratio of one, that means that you're equally likely to be in either group. But if you have an odds ratio that's greater than one, that means that you have a higher probability or a higher likelihood of being on the group at the top relative to the group on the bottom. And if you have an odds ratio that's less than one, that means that you're more likely to be on the group at the bottom compared to the group at the top. Now you can take those odds and you can then transform them into probabilities if you like. Now what's nice is that SPSS is going to do all of this for you. Now the parameters that are going to be estimated by your logistic regression model are estimated using what's called maximum likelihood. 